Welcome back to Two Chord Camp Songs for Ukulele. My name is M. Ryan Taylor, and today we will be tackling I Went to the Pictures Tomorrow. Um, we have our F chord and our C7. If you need a review of those, please go back to our introductory video. Um, we have a pickup on C, the open third string, going into an F chord. I went, okay, and uh, as for an intro, I'm just gonna count off this way. One, two, three, ready, I went, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, ready. I went to the pictures tomorrow. I took a front seat at the back. I said to the woman behind me, I can't see over your hat. She gave me some whole broken biscuits. I ate them, then gave her them back. Then I fell from the pit to the gallery and broke a front bone in my back. I turned round a straight crooked corner to see me a dead donkey die. I took out my pistol to shoot it. It spat in the back of my eye. They took me right home in a taxi. I walked every step of the way. I handed the cabbie a twenty. But didn't have money to pay. I watched the sunset in the morning. The warm snow was raining quite fast. A barefooted man took his shoes off and stood kneeling down in the grass. All right. So there we go. A bunch of nonsense. Um. This is very similar uh, in a lot of respects to I Know an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly, our last song. And I used a lot of the same techniques as far as strumming goes. Uh, of course, we have the same two chords that we've been using for all the songs so far, F and C7. We had a pickup uh, and a first uh, full measure note. Um, I know an old lady, or I went to the pictures tomorrow. Right? So it's got the first same two notes uh, with the pickup and uh, just a lot of similarities. And so we can use a lot of those same techniques. Um, we have our triplet strum, which is down, thumb, up. I was doing some down, two, up, down, two, ups. I was doing some just stopping on the first beat, down, three, one, two. Th and I was also throwing in that uh, gallop strum that I talked about the last time, which goes down, up, up, Let me just review that again because uh, it's really handy in 3-4. Uh, we have down followed by an up with a thumb and then an up with the first finger. So down, up, up, down. Down, up, up, down. It's almost just like your thumb is just getting in the way of your up strum, right? So, so that's worth practicing. Uh, it's a really great way to end phrases, okay? Especially when we have... Um, you know, in the middle of the first verse, you'll see, uh, took a front seat at the back. You notice we've got a lot of empty space there. Um, we've got five counts before the next word happens. And the same thing happens at the end. We have these long notes at the ends of phrases. And so that's a good fill. Um, took a front seat at the back. Right? And so that fills up that space a little bit nicely. Um, that's about all there is to say about I went to the pictures tomorrow. Um, there are some other things we could do with this one. Um, we could do a down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. If we wanted to do something a little bit more energetic uh, on a uh, on a on one of the verses near the end, so it felt like we were propelling ourselves forward, we could do that. We could also do that down, roll up, up, down, roll up, up, down, that we were doing uh, with... Um, um, Frankenstein. And so 
Um, let me just give you an example of what those would sound like. Let's take the last verse because that's where we would want to ramp things up really uh, to a big ending, right? So, I watch the sunset in the morning. The warm snow was raining quite fast, right? Or, I watch the sunset in the morning. The warm snow was raining quite fast. Right? And so that gives, those both give it a completely different feel. So it's up to you what you want to do with it. And uh, on this one, I wouldn't be opposed to like doing some kind of finger picking pattern. I, I think if you did a finger picking pattern though, you'd need to do an alternate F. And this is a good time for me to introduce alternate F to you. So we've got our first finger on the first fret of the second string, our second finger on the second fret of the fourth string. But then we're going to take our pinky and we're going to put it on the third fret of the first string where you would normally have a C. So we have this low C on the open third string, but then we also have this higher C up here on the third fret of the first string. Okay, and so if we're going to do some kind of finger picking technique on this, I watch the sunset in the morning. The warm snow was raining quite fast. A barefooted man took his shoes off and stood kneeling down in the grass. Now this is obviously a much more difficult technique because you're not only doing alternate chords, but you're also doing uh, a finger picking pattern that is incredibly fast, right? So you're going one, four, two, three, two, four, one, four, two, three, two, four. One, four, two, three, two, four, one, four, two, three, two, four. Okay, and I'm calling out string numbers in case that was confusing. Uh, one, four, two, three, two, four. No. One, four, two, three, two, four. When I slow it down, that's when I start to make up mistakes now. Um, one, four, two, three, two, four. One, four, two, three, two, four. It's also easier for me now to just do it rather than have to say the string numbers. Whereas at the beginning when I was doing this, um, I, I really had to concentrate on which string number I was picking. So that's a possible one. Another finger picking pattern you could do would be to uh, forget about uh, those alternate chords and do something um, like three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, one, two, four. And this gives it a nice waltz-like feel. So I'm actually plucking strings one, two, and four, uh, holding them with my thumb, my uh, index, and my ring finger. And I'm just, I'm just pinching them a little bit and then letting them go. So you just pinch and let go. You don't want to grab underneath them and pull them up because that produces these kind of ugly sounds that we get a lot with beginning players. So don't, don't fall into that trap. Just give them a pinch and then let them go. Pull your hand away. Give them a little pinch and pull, okay? So, let me do the first verse like that. I, I went to the pictures tomorrow. I took a front seat at the back. I said to the woman behind me, I can't see over your hat. I, I, I like that even better than uh, the down thumb up, down thumb up, right? Uh, but you could do a different thing practically on every single verse if you wanted to. Um, there's so many different options and possibilities. Now, alternately, if you want to do things really simple, you could do a strong strum with your thumb and then do two weak strongs with your thumb. Give it that waltz feel, but without doing anything complicated. I went to the pictures tomorrow. I took a front seat at the back. Or um, maybe the opposite of that, where you go weak, strong, strong, weak, strong, strong, weak, strong, strong, weak, strong, strong, okay? I went to the pictures tomorrow. I took a front seat at the back. That sounds more waltz-like to me, to do it that opposite way, actually. All right? So I'm just giving you possibilities, different things you could do. Um, now... The truth is today we don't have a lot of 3-4 songs. Waltzes have sort of gone out of style, um, but they're awfully fun. We've had 
a bunch of them already so far in this class because there were lots of waltzes in the in the in the old days. Um, so we've had this one. We've had I know an old lady. We've had uh, the Frankenstein slash Clementine uh, song. Um, and so waltzes uh, are a lot of fun to play, and anything in three fourth uh, can be considered a kind of a waltz. And it, while that's technically not one hundred percent accurate. Um, for our purposes, uh, as as strummers and players of the ukulele, uh, you really can think of most three four songs as having that kind of waltz feel. Uh, a really good example of a modern waltz would be uh, Enya's Caribbean Blue. So, if you want to listen to something that uh, is more modern, not terribly modern. I mean, we're talking it's twenty years old now, but uh, if you want to listen to a modern waltz um, where that's maybe within your lifetime, or maybe not, depending on how old you are. Um, Anya's Caribbean Blue is, is really an excellent example. And uh, it actually got onto the top 40 charts back when it came out. Uh, it has a gorgeous music video to it, too. So maybe that's available on YouTube, and you can look it up. Um, so next time, we are going to be tackling If You Love Me, Tell Me That You Love Me. This is also Alouetta, which is... Uh, translated into Little Skylark, okay? And uh, we will talk about the differences of these different versions of this song next time. But um, this is a really fun song, so I hope you will come back and next time and see Alouetta slash If You Love Me. Um, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I went to the pictures tomorrow. I'm sure it might have 99% chance that it was a new song to you that you'd never heard before. It's pretty obscure, but I think it's a lot of fun. So peace, love, ukulele, and have a wonderful day, and we will see you next time.